absolutely not. I had the American plan. I was planning to work, raise my family, save to build a nest egg, play by the rules, and enjoy the fruits of my labor. My employer, on the other hand, did not play by those rules. And I made a decision in 1998 when I learned that discrepancy. I could not let it go because there was a law that said I was entitled to equal pay for equal work, like all of the rest of the women and minorities. And that's what this country is built on, is fairness and equity. And we've not had it until we got President-elect Barack Obama. That we have. And over 80% of the chemicals in the products that we use presently are unknown and unregulated. The toxic substances that the Control Act, the, the Toxic Substances Control Act, has not been updated for 34 years. The President's Cancer Panel Report of 2010 states that cancer will not go away unless we clean up our acts. Is there any wonder why? One out of two men will get cancer in their lifetime, one out of three women. The children of today, for the first time in U.S. history, is predicted to not live as long as their parents. Babies are being born pre-polluted with two to three hundred chemicals found in the umbilical cord. And American women's breast milk has the most flame retardant in it from any woman on the planet. This is unacceptable and unsustainable. We are slipping down a rabbit hole toward our own demise. Since Nixon waged the war on cancer, trillions of dollars by both the public and private sectors has gone into research for a cure. So where's the cure? I'm 40 years old. 40 years old this year. Yes, I am. <laughs> with the protection of Roe v. Wade. My entire life. And I look to other women of my generation and the millennial women, and we don't know. We don't know what it's like not to be able to control our bodies. We take it for granted. We have taken it for granted. But as we look at the legislation, we look at their intent. President Clinton was so smart last night. He said they're telling us what they're going to do. They are telling us what they are going to do. I've lived my whole life being able to control my body. I will live the rest of my life being able to control my body. The values we, we're talking about are ones that we all hold dear. You know, hard work should be rewarded. That's how we were raised, that everyone in this country has something special and valuable to contribute, and that we should all have a fair chance to succeed if we're willing to put that work in, which we are. And today, I want to thank all of you, all of you, and so many more. We've got cameras, and there are women all over this country who are doing that work, playing that critical role in making that vision a reality, because we have to work for that vision, women. It just doesn't happen. I want to thank you for everything that you've been doing every day to lift up our communities and to move this country forward and make sure that all of our children have opportunities worthy of their promise. Right? Si se puede! And whether it's investing in our schools, whether it's signing the Lily Ledbetter Act to help women get people pay for their work, whether it's passing health reform so that all of our families can get the care they deserve, my husband and his partner, Joe Biden, have had our backs as women every single day. Every single day. And I know that my husband has fought these battles, not just as president. I said this in my speech, he's fought them as a son, as a grandson, as a husband, and as the father of our two amazing daughters. So Barack understands the challenges that women face. I think that's been made abundantly clear. And we know that he will keep fighting every single day to ensure that all of our daughters have no limits to their dreams. That's over. That, that there are no second-class citizens in our workplace. That, that'll be over. All that struggle.
can be gone. Oh, yeah. and, and I know that you're here because you believe, like I believe, that my husband has been an extraordinary president. And the judgment, the courage, the experience to keep moving this country forward for four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. The one thing I've been reminding people just after the speeches and all of the excitement that we can't forget that this election is about even more than the issues that are at stake right now. And it's about even more than the candidates that are on the ballot this year. This election, more than any other in history, is, is about how we want our democracy to function for decades to come. Listen, you know, it, it's about the, the lessons we want our kids and grandkids to learn as, as they watch these campaigns and they, they look on, on election night and see those results. And, and we need to step back and ask ourselves, here in America, do we want to give just a few individuals a far bigger say in our democracy than anybody else? No. Do we want our elections to be all about who buys the most ads on TV? No. Do we want our kids and grandkids to walk away from this election feeling like ordinary folks and their voices can no longer be heard? No. Or, or, or are we going to show our next generation that here in America, we all have an equal voice in the voting booth. And, and we all have a say in our country's future. No matter how much we make, or what we look like, or who we love, that we're all equal when it comes to our democracy. So we got to show them that a bottom-up grassroots movement of people who love this country can still come together to move it forward. Where we need to be, he will protect us.